everybody, and welcome to another episode of You, Me, and He, a show that's so hot, want to touch the high knee. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my favorite quotes right there, man. I love it. <laughs> Billy Madison was beautiful. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I'm your host, Rob Lambert, and I am joined by my co-host, Josh Frankenstein. Beautiful. I love it. And uh, hey, we're joined this week by uh, an awesome friend, awesome guy. Guy from our past, guy from our present, hopefully a guy from our future. <laughs> uh, Danny, right, Tur- yeah. <laughs> Danny Turner, how you doing, Danny? Good. How's it going, dude? Doing all right. Doing good. Glad to have you here. And Thank- uh, yeah, thanks for joining us tonight, man. No problem. Absolutely. Hey, Josh, I do have to ask you a question because go ahead. After our first episode, I thought a lot about this. I have to tell you, okay. like, I I stayed up at night and I I did text you. I said, you know what? When you first said. When you, when you let me know that your name is Josh Frankenstein, it's, yeah. it, it shocked me at first, but then I realized you might be a genius. But I do have a question for you. I, I appreciate I need, that. Go ahead. I need, <laughs> I need some clarification. Okay. Frankenstein. Are you Frankenstein the monster, or are you Frankenstein the doctor, or are you Frankenstein something completely different? People you want know, to know. I don't... I don't yeah, I don't even think that, uh, that we have to have a debate here. I think it's pretty obvious... It's Frankenstein the doctor. <laughs> Elaborate on that. I think I think we do need to I think we do need to debate this. <laughs> I don't think we need to debate this. Hey Rob, you remember back in the, those years when we were touring around everywhere? Um, like my main responsibility was to load the trailer and everyone was calling me Dr. Mario. Oh yeah, dude, you were the international Tetris champion. That's, That's what, right. We needed to get you a jacket. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's kind of a play off that. I'm definitely the doctor, not oh, the yeah. monster. But apparently Dar- Danny has a different opinion than I do. Yeah, I've I've uh, I've played a lot of music with you. <laughs> you. You could be considered a monster at some point. <laughs> Rob might actually agree with you on that one too, dude. Every time he was going to load that trailer, I would just look at the size of the trailer, and then I would look at all of our stuff, and I would just look at Josh and say, "The doctor is about to operate," and then somehow he would just fit it all in there beautifully and safely it was ridiculous it was a talent i don't know how it worked man but see it's it's kind of fantastic having somebody around like that to where you're like oh i hope you load it and they're like no it's cool you can't do it right and you're like, all right. <laughs> dude that's and that's almost exactly how it was and then, <laughs> and then you and the rest of the band stand around and <laughs> yeah josh dude, loads it all and you're everyone like, just brought it to the trailer and i just like all right back off yeah and you just have minute work here yeah, stroke <laughs> you just have to stroke his ego a little bit and then he's like all right cool and then everybody's happy yeah that's right. I don't know That's what right. it was, man. It's it's what I like to do. So it was awesome, dude. Speaking of music, yeah. okay. So I, my wife and I, we were house sitting. I have, I have a confession to make. My okay. wife and I, we were house sitting for these folks, and I am I'm not one who usually listens to the radio. I'm a podcast guy. So anytime I jump in the car and I'm driving, I'm listening to a podcast. Uh, you know, my brother, my brother and me. Fair enough. Uh, you know, sometimes I even like probably do that more often too. Joe Rogan or something like that. Like I'm always listening to a podcast, but these folks had, they let us borrow one of their cars while they were gone and they had a satellite, like a Sirius XM or whatever, uh, subscription. And so I'd never experienced that before. So I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll check it out. And so I have to tell you, I was, I'm not proud of this. <laughs> I was, Uh-oh. I got into the car one time and I kicked it on and right as the, the car turned on, it was in the middle of a song, and it was a song that I had never heard. And Elena of Avalor? Uh, no, no. I know that song <laughs> like the back of my hand. No. If it was that one, I would be fine. It's even worse. Um, <laughs> this song kicks on, and it's like, ha- it's like halfway or three-quarters through, and it's just got this rock and riff. And then this guy's voice comes in, and he's singing, and I'm like, it sounds familiar, but... I don't know for sure who it is, but he's singing American Dreams, American Lies. And he's singing, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh, this song is, like, pretty decent. So then it gets to the end of the song, and the guy's like, and that was off the new Papa Roach album, American Dreams. <laughs> oh, man. And I realized oh. that I was rocking out to Papa Roach. <laughs> oh, and I needed man. to pull the car over and cry a single tear. <laughs> I man, felt, this song's actually pretty good. I felt so dirty, <laughs> so dirty. I will it's say, all right, man. I will say their their new album. I I think they're going back, dude. They're taking it back to the the good old days, and they may be redeeming themselves. Like days of last resort. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, dude. All right. All right. However, 
Is, yeah, is that something to be proud of, though? It, for them, it is, man. Because when you consider the fact that, like, they wrote an album, and I, I forgot what the album was, but it was basically almost all balladly or ballady. You know, I mean, Last Resort at least came out like on the edge of Lincoln Park and Creed. You know, I mean, it was kind of yeah. that genre, so it was considered harder music when it first came out. I mean, by today's standards, obviously, it's you know, it's not that. But oh, it's it, awful. Yeah, you know, but I mean, <laughs> if, if they can at least go back to where they started, maybe find yeah. their roots a bit, and then you know, develop from there, then that'd be great. Yeah, my wife has that song on her iPod, and every once in a while, it comes on shuffle and. Every time I I cannot skip fast enough. Last I, resort. Yeah, I hear cut my <laughs> life, and I go I'm skipping. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> cut okay, but I do. Pieces. Dude, I do have a bone to pick with them because off the same album they have a song, they have a single that's called Broken Teeth, and I listened to it. And if you go listen to it right now, any anybody who's listening to this, which is probably the three of us, um. If you yeah. if you <laughs> go, if you go and listen to the intro of that song, and then you pull up the song "A Moment Suspended in Time" off of "Define the Great Line" by Under Oath, they have uh-huh. note for note ripped the intro of that song off. And oh, sacrilege! Was, I was not happy about it because that is actually yeah. not only my favorite Under Oath album, but that is one of, if not the favorite under oath song so as soon as the riff hit i was like i know that riff you borrowed it my friends so i don't know <laughs> yeah. man unfortunately man at, at some point you kind of feel like every song has been rocked out like how how does a song not sound like a predecessor or 10 or a hundred you know over the last x amount of decades of, of music you know what i mean so I, I don't know why I shouldn't be saying this. I kind of feel like I have a little bit of grace, but you know, it, you just kind of feel like you're being stabbed in the back when it's one of your favorite bands that's been robbed from. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you can have all the grace you want, but when they steal from Under Oath, yeah, it's, dude, <laughs> it's, it's a little personal. Exactly, that's all I'm saying. So, yeah, not, all that not to say, that. all that to say, I, uh, I took a ro- I took I took a walk down the Papa the Papa Road, and uh, the Papa Road. <laughs> And I got halfway down the road before I realized where I was. And once I was before there, realized, I, it I'm was too late to turn back. I need to get out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, was, you, you want to know something really unfortunate, bro, is the next time you get in that same vehicle and turn on Sirius XM, it's going to be trapped. That shows oh, up no, <laughs> that, radio. That happened the other day, so, too. I kicked it. I kicked on the I, – once again – I went to plug my phone in and I was having issues getting it to pop up on my stereo. And so I was like, all right, it's radio time. Turn on the radio. First thing I hear is headstrong will take you on. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, dude. So a couple years ago, my friend was in, uh, was in Vegas and it was probably like three or four years ago. And, uh, he tells me, he's like, yeah, dude, I'm at a, I'm at the POD and trapped show. I was like, Trapped in like, POD like, playing what together in the world, man. Like, are you in Vegas or are you in like 2003? Yeah, it's like, What's hey, uh, when did you borrow oh, a DeLorean? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're still relevant. <laughs> apparently, they are. Apparently, apparently, they're still touring. That is not cool, man, dude. I don't know what record they're touring. Probably, probably still riding the coattails of Headstrong, but oh, you know, playing the hits, bro. Man, th- talk, talk about a band right there, POD. That that that's a letdown for me, man. Uh, so, I mean, a little bit of history. Like uh, when Satellite came out, um, when that record came out, dude, it, it, I had just left Chowchilla. I was at college. Like, dude, that album to me was just phenomenal. And after Marcus left the band and they picked up Jason, I thought, dude, these guys, they're going to go to a whole nother level because, I mean... Jason Truby, dude, is just like one heck of a, a guitar player, man. That next album just flopped yeah. so bad, and they've never recovered, man. Yeah, it's just really unfortunate. Didn't you know, Rob, do you remember that show that we went to in Sacramento um, that had uh, had Lincoln Park on the Meteora tour, and it, oh, yeah. it was POD, and you know, I mean, POD sitting there, dude. They had just come out with. POD because that you know was a self-titled album, yeah. and their entire set was almost stuff from Satellite. It's like they weren't even proud of you know their own record. It was yeah. really sad. I will I will say Youth of the Nation certainly holds up today. 
Oh, yeah. I probably listen to that song at least once a week. Yeah, no. They, everything from that album, dude. That was a multi-platinum album. Like, yeah. it was just it was just good. Andrew saw them oh. recently. Did he? Oh, that's right. In Fresno, yeah. And he actually. said, he yeah. said uh, Marcus is back. Yeah. It was no, he has really? been for a while. It was the original lineup. Yeah. 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 Oh, dude. That's, he has been that's for crazy. a while. I will yeah. say, dude, Satellite, like, that album was would be hard, hard for anybody to follow, dude. After an album like Satellite... I feel like it's so hard to follow up with something that's going to be as big or like as epic, you know, and have so many yeah. songs on yeah. it that are going to be just like bangers. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think every band has that problem though. Oh, for sure. The, for the majority of bands the, given, there's a few exceptions, but dude, pick, pick one. I mean, they're, yeah, you're right. Even, they're even, all over the even, place. Even bands that we all love under oath to find the great line. What came out after that? It was uh lost in the sound. Lost in Sound yeah, of Separation. Sound, that, yeah, that mm-hmm. was a good record, but it was not Define the Great Line. Define the Great Line yeah. was, was their defining line. That was that was a redefining though of Under Oath because that album came out right after Aaron left the band. No, so they were trying it, to find. A I new think Aaron sound. was in. I think Aaron was I'm in. I'm pretty for that sure record. he wasn't, man. I'm pretty sure he left like at the end of the tour of Define the Great Line. I mean, I well, could, I he, could be wrong, but I was. I thought that's when he took off. Yeah, no, I mean, I, th- I think it actually, what was the album after that? Was it, it, was, was it Illuminator, or what was the name of that album? Disambiguation. It, it was, it was oh, something man. weird. I, I want to say Aaron was in for uh, Lost in the Sound of Separation, because he, okay. he was on that track, Too Bright to See, Too Loud to Hear. Yeah, because he's in, the, he's in the music video for that. So I think he actually left after that album, and then Disambiguation was the one where Spencer sort of took over more of the vocals, and then they had the drummer from Norma Jean. Which, dude, I mean, the, now that the original lineup is back, like, did you guys go see them for the Rebirth tour? Yeah, dude. I didn't. I mean, I ran into you in San Francisco. For right. That yeah. Show, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You and I. Yeah. You and I dude, saw that each was, other. That was literally, I can honestly say that was the best concert I have ever been to. Ever it, been to. I, I mean, when you can see one of your favorite bands, if not your favorite band, literally play their two best albums in my opinion back to back from forward to the end i mean dude it was, it was just nuts. so legit can can we please not talk about this because i was supposed to go to that with you josh but yeah, i missed it i hurt my back <laughs> more than i've ever hurt any part of my body in my dude. entire life until this point and Man. i i literally couldn't move and i just remember laying in bed thinking Josh is watching Under Oath right now. Oh, man. And it was and magical. I'm, and I'm laying in bed in pain. <laughs> this is the worst day of my life. And then he came back and he was like, dude, it was so amazing. I'm like, it was like the best up. show I've ever seen, dude. It was, it was awesome. He was sending me pictures. It was the worst. Dude, yeah, I... The best for him, worst for me. I was up on the barricade. So, you know, you know they're set up... They're set up in the usual uh, setup. You know, you got Chris all the way to the left playing the keys. And so I'm up on the barricade basically right in front of Chris while he's getting crazy. And then, you know, Tim is right there playing the guitar. But I remember oh, yeah. it. the show started and I was like I was wearing like jeans and like a button, like a button up shirt. And by the end you had that even, flannel on, is what you were wearing. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I, I don't even wearing a shirt. <laughs> I don't even think it was like the end of the the concert. I think they made it through a f- like the first album, and then they took a little break before they came back and did "Define the Great Line." And like, yeah. the lights come up, and I look at myself, and I'm like, sweat through my shirt. My shirt is ripped open. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> how, my, how did my, my hair crazy? Just open up? Like, I know somebody <laughs> grabbed my butt a few times. I was like, this is the greatest concert ever. <laughs> Isn't isn't it Dude. awesome though? So so two two dads go see Under Oath and they're just instantly transported back to when they were like oh, dude, college kids, man. having the time of their life. Yeah, it, it was, was phenomenal. It, was nuts, dude. I, it definitely felt it, it brought a little bit of that youth back, man. Yeah. I mean that was that was a huge inspiration, man. And then Under Oath to, was a huge inspiration. And then you had to drive home and wake up for work the next morning. You're like, oh, oh getting, I didn't go to work. I'm getting too morning. old for these yeah, rigs. No, no, I didn't go to work the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> there was no did you just make a lethal, a lethal weapon joke? That was beautiful. He did, yeah. I did, yeah. yes. He, yes. He, he went back there. Can you that believe that? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. So, I mean, oh, yeah, that was an awesome it, – it's awesome experiences like that that I feel like redeem these experiences where I'm riding in a car and I happen to be listening to Papa Roach. 
But <laughs> let's be honest. It's so funny, though. Let's be honest. We all have <laughs> bands. We all have music. We all have songs that, like, if we're honest with ourselves, we're not too proud that we listen to it. But when nobody's looking or when no one else is in the car, we crank it up and we sing along. And so that's one of the things I want to talk about tonight is your your best – and we're gonna get. We need to just get real. Like, there's no judgment. <laughs> all right, just we're gonna be real with each other, supportive. I want to know your guilty pleasure songs or bands. Tonight we're gonna have some confessions. So oh, who wants dude. to start? I, I I'll start because this is this is extremely recent. As in, this happened last night. So I was coming home from class and. First of all, uh, it, it's a guilty pleasure of mine, and it, it's a confession that I even have this song on my iPod. It's even worse that when it comes on shuffle, I'll, I'll not only leave it on, but I'll, I'll turn it up, and, and, <laughs> oh, and no. I will sing. I will sing like there is no tomorrow, <laughs> and that song was "Call Me Maybe." Oh and my! I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I, I know, I know, everybody kind of, you know. They they say oh that's my guilty pleasure but I mean like I was r- I was really going for it like <laughs> he's trying to hit those notes it, off. I couldn't I, I wasn't hitting them but not for lack of trying because like, I mean it's it's just me uh, from Merced to Chowchilla driving home from class oh man and you know what that drive when it gets lonely you'll you'll pretty much put anything in, on in the middle yeah. of the in the middle of the night just cruising ninety nine. Sc- basically just screaming call me yeah. maybe thinking i should do a cover of this <laughs> and then thinking or i shouldn't i probably shouldn't do that dude he's just you're nice. practicing for nice. your rock star moment when you can be front stage at a carly ray jepson concert and then she just hears you and singing she in pulls the crowd you up on stage yeah, she just yeah, pulls yeah. you up <laughs> puts your heart in a bloody blender <laughs> next thing you know dude oh. you are you are Carl- carly ray jepson there you go. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> that sucks I mean, to hear. I'm, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's way more, and those probably more embarrassing ones. But that was it was an eye opener for me. No, that's pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. That's because you know you, you know when you're when you're singing your guilty pleasure song and halfway through you're like, what are you doing? Yeah. Why are you doing you, this? You immediately feel ashamed. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, ah. Why am I, but then you're like, but here's that, here's that chorus. I gotta get <laughs> ready. ready to go. <laughs> let, let me take a drink of water. <clears throat> I'm ready to hit the notes. You, yeah. You just catch, you just catch a glimpse of yourself in the rear of your mirror and you're like, I hate myself, <laughs> but I kind of love myself right now at the same time. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. What about you, Josh? Yeah. Oh man. You know, to be honest with you, the last time I was in a car alone, <laughs> by myself i was heading up to bass lake and i don't know why but i put on pink's greatest hits oh yes, yes. <laughs> okay yes. <laughs> wait like you're and in the car I... by yourself no one else you look at your phone and you're like what can i listen to to make this trip amazing and the thing that pops in your head is pink's greatest hits yeah, so I mean to 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 add a little bit of context here, what made it even worse is like all the way from Chowchilla, I was flipping through Kill so- or Kill Switch Engage and Under Oath and Bullet for My Valentine. And you know, obviously, <laughs> this drive from Chowchilla to to uh, Highway 145 where where I'm just outside of Madeira is only about 25 minutes. So I probably made it through like five songs, you know, yeah. on this playlist <laughs> and started thinking like I just want to listen to something else. So, like, I look down at my phone, you know, it's running through Bluetooth and stuff, and, you know, you're scrolling, you're scrolling, you're scrolling, and you just kind of get to an artist, and you're like, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, put, you it, go, put it on oh. pink. <laughs> yeah, dude. And I, for some reason, I listened to that to that Greatest Hits album so far, is what it's called, oh, all man. the way up to Bass Lake, man, and just loved it. And, you know, I, I, were you driving your pickup? Yeah, unfortunately, God, my, God, my my Ford F two fifty. God, I love that. <laughs> That's phenomenal. Yeah, no, it was it was awesome, man. But it, it, I'm not gonna apologize for this though, dude. Like honestly, um, as far as like some of the some of my favorite female vocalists out there, like Pink is one of them. 
Like okay. I, I just I I like her. I like the tone of her voice. I like I just I always imagine that being someone that I could perform with because I really like the tone of her voice. I think she's got a phenomenal set of vocals, even though she's not like Mariah Carey or, you know, um, name your other, you know, pop stars that are out there. I, she's got a different take, man. And got a, I don't give a crap attitude, which she's, you know, a, is, she, she's on the, pretty cool. She's so. on the edgier side of pop. Yeah. And <laughs> well, that's the thing. If you've ever seen her in interviews or anything, Look, we're defending also, pink. <laughs> yeah, I know. If, if you've ever seen her in interviews, like I don't, I don't feel like it's a, I don't feel like it's an act. Like, I feel like she's pretty real. I mean, dude, she dates or is married to Carrie Hart. I mean, the motocross champion. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you know, that that's not like really a culture that's, you know, fake. Maybe a little bro, but. <laughs> oh, my God. <gosh>. You know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Uh, getting Sorry, back to bro it. listeners. Yeah. That, that's, that was probably my guilty pleasure. Dude, for, that's awesome. For this episode. Yeah. That's fantastic. I, so, mine is interesting because it was developed out of i want to say necessity but here's the deal this yeah is, danny I'm, and i are looking at each other right now like what i'm gonna spin i'm mean? gonna spin you a little bit of a yarn <laughs> that's gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna take you on a trip and then i'm gonna bring you back home and i'm gonna bed you down and everything's gonna All make right. sense okay so i found out the hard way I found out the hard way that when, you, when you're riding in a car, if you plug your iPhone in, if you have no songs in your library, if you try to like play a podcast or something like that, it won't register. Like It won't play. It has to have some, at least one song in like iTunes or like the music app that it recognizes, hey, there's audio on this phone or something like that. That's what I read anyway because I couldn't get it to work. So... Um, the reason I was in the predicament where I didn't have any music on my phone is that I don't buy music. I just usually subscribe to like Spotify or something like that. But right. a while back, my wife had bought one particular album that somehow synced to both of our phones and so every time I would plug <laughs> and by my... somehow you mean you actually went in there and you you downloaded it. <laughs> Dude, shut up. <laughs> By your wife, you mean you bought it. So, uh, and if anybody knows the way that, you know, the iPod or the iPhone works, when as soon as you plug it in, it auto plays. So every time I would get in my car and plug my phone in, no matter what I wanted to listen to, All right, and yeah. immediately what would start playing is the album 1989 by Taylor Swift. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh no! And so please, I got really, I got really please. sick of it. I got really sick of hearing oh. it autoplay. So I deleted it off my phone. But then my i my, my my uh podcast wouldn't work. Oh man! So I had to re-download it. And I have to say, <laughs> when my phone plugs in, as soon as it starts kicking on, I have to say, dude, I have not been as quick to turn it off. Shut it off. <laughs> Oh, Rob. <laughs> so, so that's bad. Okay, I mean, I mean, <laughs> but yes, but it, it's it's not it's not that bad because I I I'll admit it openly, and I won't even you know be shy about it that I I used to somewhat enjoy Taylor Swift. Okay, I thought oh. she I thought she wrote I thought I thought she wrote some catchy songs. You can't but deny by, that. by she you mean all of her producers. Well, yeah, yeah, of wrote wrote her catchy songs. But now, I mean, that what's that new record that she has out and that new single? The I don't look care. what you made me do. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh <laughs> my gosh, dude, I have never been a fan. Uh, I the, will never be a fan, ever, ever, dude, ever. Uh, the problem. Exclamation point. The problem with this album, the reason that it haunts my dreams, dude, is there's so many bangers on it, bro. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> dude. When you're we are never about... ever 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 getting back together. <laughs> exactly. Come on. Yeah, there it is. Who does it? Who does it? Like shake song. it off. You got blank space. You got bad no. blood. I mean, Boom. there's there's some deep tracks dude. on here that people uh, don't even know about yet. Yeah. yeah. 
All the all the ones that you're describing right now are the ones that just make me hate all of that even more. <laughs> no, I can't stand it. Nin- 1989 the, was your last good the record. The only I'll thing go, about I'll go those on songs that. that make me smile is when I see my kids dancing to them. That's about it. Other than that, I'm like ready to burn them. Like no. I don't want to hear them. Oh yeah, totally. You can't deny. I mean, she's she's gone from teardrops on her guitar to <laughs> just dude. She has a blank space, and she will write your name. Okay. Uh, she's she's a Kardashian of of the music industry. I okay. Can't stand With, her. I'm, you can't Dude, fault her. Actually, for that. I can't say that I can't stand her. I've never met her. I've never talked to her. So I'm not going to go that far. But I definitely can't stand the music I'll, she puts out. I'll go out. that far. I, I would say I probably wouldn't like her as a person, but as a musician, I'd be in her band. Oh, for what? sure. That's oh, not sure. the question here, dude. Like, if someone's going to pay me to play for Taylor okay, Swift, fine. then yeah, I'll be in okay. her band. I, I wouldn't like her as a person, but <laughs> I, I'll listen to her music driving down the 99. No, I won't do that. Not with my wife in the car. My, my look wife at her and say, hates her. Hey, uh, Taylor Swift, uh, I hate you, but can I be on your tour? <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. You, there you go, man. Yeah, no. Uh, well, I don't I don't blame you, Rob. I mean, this is guilty pleasures, and everybody is uh, entitled to their own and stuff like that. But, man, that is one I cannot stand, bro. Dude, okay, and then here's the other thing, okay? The, the first time I ever got a taste of this album, I was shopping with my wife. And we were in some store like The Gap or Claire's or something. I have no idea. But over the PA, I hear this song. And it's I'm I don't recognize the voice. It's because it's obviously a different style, pun intended. And um, <laughs> I'm like, who is this? What song is this? So I pull out my phone and I open my Shazam, because I apparently am a 40 year old man. And I Shazam. Well, this, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. I Shazam the song, and it happens to be the song "Style" by Taylor Swift. And I'm like, Ugh. dang it! But Here's what I'll say. Two of the best like metal covers that I've ever heard. There's a band called Crap, I can't remember, but they did a metal cover of Blank Space that I thought was really good. You can find it on YouTube. All right, I'll have to take a listen to that. If you okay. just Is it like I Prevail or something? Yes. If you YouTube I Prevail Blank Space, it's oh, awesome. So you've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. other one is the song Style which as soon as I heard it, I was like, a metal cover of this song is going to be beast mode. And then two bands did it. And one of them, I can't remember which one I like more. If you go and you search metal cover style, uh, there's two bands. One of them is called The Weight of Atlas. And I don't remember. And the other one has Atlas in its name also. But the way you'll know is one is like a just like a lyric video. And then one is like a live not alive, but it's like the the band actually playing the music, and it's like a music video. And the one where they're playing the music, that band, if that's Weight of Atlas, I can't remember. But that's that cover of that song, Style, is amazing. Just, ugh, it's so good. It's pretty awesome when people can take a really crappy song and improve it by doing it the better way. So, so does that make it inherently <laughs> crappy or inherently not crappy? I don't know. It's like a the it, chicken it, or the egg argument. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, this song <laughs> oh sucked, but now it's really awesome. <laughs> did it really suck to begin with, or or did the person performing it? Just How philosophical suck? of you, dude? It's like <laughs> this weird. It's this fine line where you don't know, like, was it awesome and they made it awesomer, or did they take the dookie and turn it into gold? Like yeah. you know, a lot of people don't like Bob Dylan's voice, but they're like, oh, he can write a good song. And then Hendrix covers All Along the Watchtower, and it's an amazing song. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh yeah. Was All Along the Watchtower always a bad song? Or? <laughs> or or how about Phil Collins' Can You Feel It Coming in, in, in the Air Tonight? Or just In the Air Tonight? What, what, do you remember that cover, <laughs> Ralph? <laughs> in the Air Tonight? The Air. Yeah, In the Air. The Air. <laughs> Tonight's, tonight in the Air, is I think was what it was called. Dude, we got we to gotta look into the laws surrounding like what clips we can play. Why, why do that when we can just, we can just do it? We can just sing it. Here, I'll do the No, drums. I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not doing that. I can feel it coming. In. No. Yeah, let's stay away from that. <laughs> Dude, it's like pitch perfect over here. We got this. <laughs> no, I'll be Fat Amy. Yeah. And <laughs> Dude, I wanted to be Fat Amy. <laughs> All right, you can be Fat Amy. That's fine. <laughs> 
Well, hey, all of us, all of us now, I, I just feel like we're so much closer. We've, we've got these things off of our chest. We're, I feel lighter. I just feel better about myself. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah, I, you. I do feel like I'm just kind of floating right now. It's kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting is that we just basically spent like 20 minutes like promoting Carly Rae Jepsen, Taylor Swift, and Pink. So. <laughs> Good job. You're everybody. welcome, ladies. That's right. Yeah, three dudes who are just gushing over under oath. They're like, no, I love Carly Rae Jepsen. Dude. dude, Pink, she's, she's so tight. That's the irony in it, you know? That's the way it goes. And for those of you listening, if you don't have a guilty pleasure or you think you don't have a guilty pleasure, you're lying to yourself That's and right. everybody else. Absolutely. So it, Absolutely. they exist. Speaking yeah. of, I mean, you, everybody's default d- guilty pleasure is Neil Diamond. If you, oh, if you can't oh, think of one, dude, Neil sweet Diamond. Caroline? Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. If you're having trouble thinking of your guilty pleasure, it, 10 times it, out of 10, it's Yeah, Diamond. it's going to be a Neil Diamond or Journey. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really guilty pleasure? Whoa. Maybe not, but here, here's the thing about Journey, though. Like, as epic as they are and as big as they were um, for their time period and everything, like, they were never really, like, 70s rock. They get, like, thrown into that, but they weren't really 70s rock. They were, you know, there was a lot of ballads that they yeah. wrote that weren't really what I would call rock, you know? So, um, I mean, don't stop believing it are, do any one of the three of us actually think that's a rock song, man. I ha- I had been to it. <laughs> sure you I mean, of course. Yeah. After you, after you've thrown a few back, <laughs> Oh, Anybody at a wedding is going to headbang to Don't Stop Believing. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's okay. Have you been to a wedding where that song's played? Okay, so yeah, yeah, all right. That, I think that's going to settle it right now. <laughs> like if that song or if any song has been played at a wedding, depending on the type of wedding, if it's a traditional wedding, it probably can't qualify as a, as a rock song. Rock song, you know. That's a, that's a party pleaser. Wasn't you your beer. wedding song Nickelback? Ooh. Yeah, that wasn't a rock song either. <laughs> from a rock band though yeah who have actually written other rock songs <laughs> try and compare that's, nickelback that's to, debatable to, oh, 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 oh it was yeah, a bold no, choice no, no. it was a bold choice yeah. to have your first dance to to nickelbacks like we're animals but <laughs> <laughs> that's right everybody take note <laughs> but we saluted you like a graphic people <laughs> <laughs> right in front of a church crowd too. That's what made it even more awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> Can we get the bride and groom to the dance floor? <laughs> it was epic. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's amazing. Well, hey, everybody's everybody's got guilty pleasures, whether they want to admit it or not. And if you have one, that's right. We would love to uh we'd love to hear about it. So uh, you can either uh, tweet us at uh, you, me, and he podcast, or uh, go ahead and leave us a comment at facebook.com slash you, me, he podcast, and uh, just use it as a moment to be therapeutic to get some things off your chest. You're going to love it. It's That's good. That's right. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. We, we probably won't left make fun of you. Out, so, yeah. We won't make fun of you that much. Just a little bit. Not that much. At yeah. least not publicly. Yeah. Or right. if we do make fun of you, we won't release your name. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so speaking of people leaving comments, speaking of listeners joining in and being a part of the show, uh, we love to take a listener question. So if you, uh, if you have a question for us that you'd love for us to kind of talk about or debate or uh, just give our opinion on, then, uh, or even if you have a problem that you need us to solve, yo, you got a problem, we'll solve it. Check out this plug while... Josh revolves it. Anyway, um, uh, you can drop it at those same places on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, so this question, completely random, has nothing to do with what we've been talking about tonight, but it's amazing. Uh, it came from our buddy Dave, and he asks us this. Would you rather eat a hot dog, a hamburger, or a pizza while skydiving? Interesting question. Is this like a whole pizza, or is this like a slice of pizza? I would say... I'm gonna go whole that pizza. Changes it up. I'm gonna go whole pizza. Let's <laughs> go change it up a, a little bit. A whole pizza? We're who skydives about, oh, with one slice of pizza? That's go big or go home, Josh. <laughs> who who, who skydives, skydives with a whole pizza? Yeah. <laughs> how many uh, sli- how many slices are we talking of this whole pizza? Are we talking twelve? Let's go probably let, just uh, let's, to keep let's it. call it a medium large from round table. Ooh, See, yeah. well, I think round table is it's too obscure. Like that's too rich for some people's blood. We got to go five dollar pepperoni. From Little Caesars. What is that? Eight slices? Okay. Oh. 
So it's <laughs> so is it the square one or is it the round one? No, no, no. We're going round. Hot and ready, baby. Hot and ready. I think that yeah. one of these is the easy choice. And Okay, so clearly. One that I'm going to just take off the table right now is the hot dog. Why would you take that off the table? Because for the simple fact that the way I eat my hot dogs, like I've got like onions on there okay. and and spicy brown mustard That's and fair. relish and all that stuff's going to come flying okay, off but, as I'm going down, let, dude. Let me, let me present but, you with these facts. You could put those onions and the relish and the mustard on underneath. the bun and then you put the dog on top. It's all it's tucked in, baby. It's ready to go to sleep. I don't think it happens <laughs> that way. I really, I really don't. I, th- I think it could. I personally, I think the hot dog is the easy choice. I think the hot dog is is the the novice route because just like Danny's saying, I, all the toppings you can just tuck them into that crevasse, and once the dog is in there, that bad boy is like cock lock and ready to rock for sky well you could just as easily do it with the with the hamburger too i mean let, let's call it an in and out burger but double double man okay it's wrapped nice and tight you know i mean nothing's coming flying out I, I, like I, it's all it's sandwiched between two buns i think it's all good i think the 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 obvious choice for the easy answer is is pizza it's, I feel like it is. It's literally the only one that is just one piece of thing. And to, like top it off, dude. If it's a whole pizza, you fold that bad boy in half. Amen. Make like a calzone. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Down. All right. Okay. So 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 we do have the option to say, hey, pizza maker, I'm about to jump out of a plane. Don't cut it. That's right. <laughs> just let me fold it in half that's, one time. That's what I'm thinking. And have man. a huge, like, ginormous, <laughs> medium-sized pizza oh, taco. Oh, and and to our listener Dave, by the way, we just created a new food. It's the pizza taco. Yeah, pizza taco. See, just like the calzone, but you know, <laughs> because because a hot dog, a hot dog is you, you can tuck everything underneath the dog and keep it secure. But that's that's a lot of moving pieces. That is a lot of moving you know, pieces, figuratively and literally. <laughs> and <laughs> same thing with a hamburger. I mean, you got two buns. You got two slices of cheese, two patties. Yeah, there's that's a lot of things. There's happening. a lot of stuff in there. Pizza, you just have it's all just melted on. Yeah, you just, just have right there. It's like one piece. You just have one solid thing that you need to control yeah. while you're plummeting to your death. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I agree. One, I le- agree, one yeah. less thing to worry about. I'm gonna have to go with the uh, little Caesar's five dollar, five dollar special here. See, but that's not my answer. My that's answer, not your answer. My answer, though, I think, huh? would be you may be going down the road I was gonna go. I I, I, I want to say my answer would. I don't know. <laughs> he's I, like honestly debating this right now. You should see the having, look on his face. He's, he's like oh, having an existential oh, crisis. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go hot dog. Final answer because what's more American than skydiving with a hot dog in your hand? And I'm gonna have a Budweiser in my other hand. Oh, come on. All right, I think Danny wins this. Dis- well, actually, technically, you could have you could have that beer with a burger too. It would be more difficult to to take the pizza with one of those. So, if you are plummeting to your death, you definitely want a, a cold brew there with you as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I guess you don't have to plummet. You to You know your what? Death. I think I just had my mind changed. Yeah. You're welcome. You're Thanks. going with the dog. I think I'm gonna have to now. Here's the deal, dude. You're both a, co- a cold one with a hot dog. Oh man. You're both taking the easy way out here's the deal the dog is the easy choice because like we said we can tuck it all in the pizza comes in second because like you said if somehow you can convince that guy in the back at little cesar's not to slice the bad boy then yeah you got yourself a pizza taco aka calzone but i think that for somebody who's going to jump out of a plane while consuming food this this says to me this is somebody who doesn't only want to live life to the extreme they want to take every single moment to the extreme so why take the easy road the hamburger is the clear choice for the most extreme because like you said there's so much to it i mean as soon as you hit the air that top bun is flapping there is there is lettuce there's shredded lettuce and and secret sauce flying everywhere and so, you are so you're wanting the mess as I'll, you're going down is what you're I'm saying. I'm not wanting the mess. I'm saying if you're going to do this. You wanting the you wanting the victory. I want the I, challenge. Okay. I want to go big or I want to go home. 
But see, gotcha. my, my my only thing with that is have have you ever eaten a hamburger driving your car? You you can do it one handed, and you you can keep everything relatively intact. Yeah. I mean, granted, you're not free falling from however far you free fall from. Yeah, if we want to use this as an experiment, you need to stick your head and the burger outside the window while you're driving. You know what? I just found out what I'm doing tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) If you you see some crazy dude on the news hanging out his car window, chowing down on a double-double, it's me. Just wave. (laughs) I'm seeing how far we can take this. (laughs) Well, hey, Dave, thanks for the question. And once again, hey, if you have, like we said, if you have a question, throw it our way. It could be about anything, literally anything, and we would love to give our two cents on it. Uh, Guys, as we come to the end of our time, one of the things that we love to do is what we call the Socrates. We like to take a look back at the episode. Everything that we've talked about, we are technically we are older than when this episode started. Hopefully we are a little bit wiser. We've learned things about ourselves and about each other. And so, gentlemen, in light of everything we've talked about today, if you could look back on a younger you and give yourself some advice, what would you say to your younger self? I would say, Josh, don't let anyone look down on you for liking Pink. She's a phenomenal artist. Enjoy that music. That Yeah, there we go. Just let His your younger f- me would have been embarrassed. Beautiful. <laughs> Just let your freak flag I'm, fly. I'm, I'm touched. Beautiful. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say, uh, you know what, Danny? You buy that Carly Rae Jepsen shirt. You wear it. <laughs> don't, wear it with pride. Yeah, don't, and don't, get it in pink. Yeah, don't let anybody tell you. <laughs> and I would say, you know what? If you have the opportunity to dive out of an airplane holding a hot dog and a Budweiser, do, do it. it. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> I think I would do it and send the video to Rob. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I think I would. uh, I think I would have to sit myself down, look myself right in the eye, and say, "Rob, stay away from satellite radio because Papa Roach is coming for you, and they want your blood." (laughs) (laughs) Hey, we want to thank everybody for listening to uh, you, me, and he. And hey, until next time, my name is Rob. This is Josh Frankenstein. This is Danny. Once again, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time.